What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Jake Shavink here, and welcome to the year 2022. Hope you guys have had a wonderful holiday season and get excited. 2022 is going to be fabulous on this channel. Got a lot of stuff for the draft, film room stuff, NFL stuff as it's still winding down. But what a better way to kick off 2022 than with a two round 2022 NFL mock draft coming at you guys we are using the nfl mock draft database simulator great simulator i know there's a few out there but this one has a bunch of other tools consensus mocks consensus big boards user mocks it keeps track of all the mocks across the internet definitely worth checking out i will link that in description but let's dive into it a, a two round mock that's going to have a few surprises i think it's good to shake things up and of course remember I don't hate your team. This is just a fun exercise, so enjoy it because it's going to be a fun draft process and draft as well. So let's dive in to this mock right now. So here we go. Uh, start things off. The Jags are going to go Evan Neal, and I know this may seem crazy. Obviously, passing on Hutchinson and Thibodeau is not something that we see, but again, the Jaguars, they've put so many resources into that defensive line. Josh Allen, Caleb on Chase on Taven Bryant. Like that's that's a unit that's good. That's the real good unit the Jaguars have right now. Help protect Trevor Lawrence. For goodness sakes. Like, come on. This it should be that easy. This should be this offseason should be about helping Trevor Lawrence. Evan Neal's a great star with that. I think again, it looks like a top five prospect to me. I thought he did excellent in the playoff game if you missed it against Cincinnati. Dude was fantastic in pass protection. He's picking up stunts. He's moving quick with his feet with such a big frame. And again, he gets after it in the run. He can reach block. He finishes a spectacular tackle player. And I think he just fits right in left tackle, protect Trevor Lawrence. What else is there to say? Lions at two. I'm going to go Aiden Hutchinson for them here. Again, I think a lot of people might overreact to the Hutchinson game against George last night. I think they did a great job game planning against him. And, and that's what you want to see. Uh, Hutchinson is still a great athlete, great hands, flexible. He's a good snap guesser. That's fine with me. Like I know people are going to say that contributes to production. Fine. Dude, dude knows film. He, he studies film and it's very apparent. He makes some great plays chasing from behind backside pursuit against screens to the outside. He does it all super productive season for Michigan makes sense. Stays in a state with the lions. Makes it real easy for the Texans here at three. I don't think quarterbacks in their plans at all. I think they roll with Mills. They're going to get a heavy return, we assume, for Deshaun Watson. Why not start it off kind of like how they did in what felt like a starting point for them to build to a contender like Jadavian Clowney was back in 2014. Do it again. Draft came on Thibodeau, whose ceiling has not yet been reached. Just a fabulous run defender, understands leverage. And again, the athletic tools are off the charts. He's going to grow into a fabulous pass rusher at the next level. I, I'm, I'm certain of that. Great start for the Texans here. The Jets. There's a lot going on with the Jets and talking about Mekhi Becton. Some weird battle lines drawn. If you saw it on Pro Football Network, some weird stuff going on there. I, I don't think it changes the approach here if you're the Jets. I, I still think Charles Cross makes a ton of sense for them. Again, George Fant. If they really believe in him, great. I'm not believing in him. I think if you have Becton and Cross, however you want to put it, if you if there are people who believe Kai Becton is a right tackle in the NFL, maybe move him over there. Cross, great athlete. He proved functional strength. His lower half looked a lot better uh, against powerful rushers in the SEC. Week in and week out, fantastic stuff in pass protection. He gets after in the run game, but again, when you have Wilson and you have all these weapons in the passing game you want to use, having protection is important. Charles Cross will help you with that. So the New York Giants decided that Judge and Daniel Jones both going to return, it sounds like, in 2022. So this is all in for Daniel Jones. We're going Icky Equinu here. A lot of pancakes. Dude's a finisher. He's extremely physical. And I think he's done enough to prove that he can play on the outside at tackle. Let him be the bookend to Andrew Thomas and let the offensive line eat. And I think you're giving Jones the best chance uh, with Equinu there. Jets back up. And I know last time we were on here, we had such a nice, aesthetically pleasing uh, draft order. Not not so much anymore, but we're going to go Derek Stingley. I think they're getting great production on Michael Carter, the second, the corner, not the running back, but both are true. But we're talking about the corner here as a rookie. I think he's done well. Build around Bryce Hall. I think he's, he's had his moments still developing. Get an elite player there in Derek Stingley in a deep class, in a good class. 
and and let the guy eat in your defense. Become a stalwart there. Become a cornerstone for Robert Sala. Again, the cover skills, the instincts, the ball production's all there. This is really the first like point in the draft, I think, where you look and you go, well, th- th- there are trade outs potentially happening. Teams are going to start moving up for quarterbacks. Carolina doesn't have a day two pick right now. I think that changes by the time draft day rolls around. Here we're going to stick because we're not doing trades in this one. We're going to go Kenny Pickett for them. Quarterback position is not figured out. They threw resources to get Sam Darnold. It hasn't worked. I know the offensive line's bad. I just don't think Darnold is, is the answer. Cam Newton's not the answer coming in relief. They haven't figured it out. They need to get a guy who's poised, who's accurate. And, and Pickett really took that jump in, in 2021 this season to where he looks like a, a polished passer at every level of the field. He's smart. He's a good decision maker. And he's poised. Not afraid to you know slide in the pocket, make some off-platform throws. He's made a lot of NFL throws this year that weren't on tape last fall. Again, I think he's he, he's the first off the board here, and and I think that will, I, I think there's a good chance that happens on draft day. Giants back up. There's not much to say. We're gonna go Tyler Linderbaum, crazy, all in, double down, offensive line, gonna go center. Linderbaum's fantastic. The Billy Price stuff's got to end uh, in New York. Just just knock it off. Uh, again, Linderbaum, great player, great athlete, good space blocker. He. he I think he holds up fine. I know there's some functional strength issues that you may look at for a 290-pound center where you're like, yeah, these nose tackles. Listen, there's going to be help. I think the Giant. I trust the Giants up front to get things figured out. You have Equinu. Now you have Linderbaum. Again, it's going to be a great unit for Daniel Jones, and that's the goal right now is to build that because I think the defense looks pretty good overall. So something that I definitely want to touch on when I went through this we're going to go Kyle Hamilton here, obviously, for Washington, who I think this is great value. I just don't know. Like, the last safety, now think about it. You know, Minka Fitzpatrick, Derwin James, both elite safeties, in my opinion. Both went in the teens. Jamal Adams goes high. We're really not sure how good Jamal Adams really is, other than, you know, playing around the line of scrimmage, short zones, let the guy blitz. Like, teams are going to back away from that position a little bit more in terms of valuing it as highly in the draft. I still think Kyle Hamilton's the best player in the draft. Um, I still think NFL teams will be skeptical though, but the Washington football team, they will not be. Uh, This is a guy that is going to transform your defense. Now I I think the front is good. Obviously young will be back. You got pain. You have Allen, you have sweat linebacker. You hope for more for Jamin Davis next year, but you have now a safety in, in Hamilton who, if you want curl to play more slot, more near the box, Landon Collins, is he a linebacker now? Maybe like Hamilton's range. He can play all over the field. He's a great tackler in space. He's great football IQ. This is a, we don't throw around generational lightly. I'm going to say rare. He's a rare talent at safety. And that's, that's all you need to know. Washington goes Kyle Hamilton bypasses quarterback. Interesting idea, but I think it's possible. Boy, Atlanta needs to get better at edge rusher, don't they? Seriously. George Karlaftis, honestly, better athlete than given credit for. The Big Ten knew he was a problem. They threw two, three blockers at him. They chipped him all the time. He's still productive. Go look at the Iowa game. He he wrecked those tackles all game long. He's flexible. He trims the edge. He's got great hands, and he finishes at the quarterback. Great backside pursuit. Great tackler. Full package at edge, if you ask me. And and the Falcons need it. They get it. Denver could also go quarterback here. I'm not going to do that for them. I'm going to go edge. Again, Bradley Chubb's good. And, you know, they've obviously got Jonathan Cooper's taking some meaningful reps there. I still think Ojabo is a top 15 player. Um, in terms of where he goes in the draft, I should say. I think he might be a little bit higher ranked on my board when all said and done. But... Ojabo is is really starting to come into his own. He's really figuring out, you know, how to rush a quarterback, run, go with a plan, you know, attack, ghost move. He, he, he's he got the flexibility. He's a great athlete. He can convert speed to power. I, I don't know how you don't pass. I, I don't know how you pass that up uh, if you're a team in the top 15 with a needed edge. And I think Minnesota is, is pretty ticked that he goes one pick before them, truthfully, because he can be that good. He needs to get better on run defense. Absolutely, of course. But it's like sky's the limit with this guy. I really believe that. Minnesota. I'm going to go crazy. Listen, this is fun. If you go crazy and you're mad about the crazy pick, fine. But, like, this is fun. It's a fun simulation. Kirk Cousins carries a huge cap. Maybe they can unload him. 
Maybe they just get rid of him. Maybe Zimmer's gone. Maybe Spielman's gone. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what Minnesota does this offseason, especially if they don't make the playoffs, which by the time you're watching this, tomorrow night they'll be playing Green Bay, obviously without Cousins. We'll see how that goes. I, I'm, I'd am i be skeptical. I think they fall to 7-9 and nine if they lose. Maybe it's time to blow it all up. Matt Corral. Let's go back to Corral, though. Really good quick game passer. He's got rushing production. and He's got a good enough arm. And, and again, I think he cut down on bad decision making. So a guy who can operate, I think you'll be able to find Jefferson a ton. And he's got a good offensive line in front of him, which is a good thing. He's obviously got a great running back there. I think it's a good situation for Corral to step into. New Orleans Saints here. Uh, yeah, this is Jamison Williams. Um, I just wouldn't be surprised if New Orleans, if they don't get Russ here, obviously they probably won't have this pick. If they do, they just say, eh, let's try, let's try Hill and, and Winston again. And I think Winston was good enough. That's a playoff team. If they don't have all these quarterback issues, truthfully, eh, they still have a chance to make the playoffs, but it's, it looks slim now, but boy, they need a deep threat uh, opposite Michael Thomas at, at a Z, you know, you want to throw him in the slot a bit too. I, I think Jameson Williams biggest riser could be wide receiver one for some people. Wouldn't hate it. Uh, great, obviously elite speed. I think his route pacing. I think he's he's able to work on that vertical plane with good pacing. He's a double move guy, but a wide catch radius too. And obviously the acceleration to turn anything into a touchdown. Exactly what the Saints had when they were successful. Get another one of those guys. Cleveland Browns at 14. Going Traylon Burks. I, I think it makes sense to Wilson. I understand why they want Wilson if you're a fan of them. I think you give Baker, if you roll with him next year, a bigger target to throw to. I think you give him a bigger target who, who can go up and make the place, you know, with a wide catch radius. Maybe even Drake London's in play here. But I think Burks with his speed, his size, you know, he's a bowling ball after the catch with an excellent acceleration and burst. He's working on the route tree. But again, if he can use his hands and his frame to get open as well, that's a plus. And again, he could be a deep threat. He can do a lot of different things for you. Get the ball in the screen game, mesh, you know, work those concepts where you can get the ball to him quick. Pittsburgh was in attendance for Sam Hall's last, we assume, last game in the Mayo Bowl. I think they can roll with him here. And I think there's a real good chance they go offensive line heavy in free agency. Maybe they add a Teron Armstead, um, who the Saints will probably have to let go. Yeah, I, I think Sam Hall, definitely Baker vibes for a player like him totally understand why uh, people say that he, he's tough he throws a good deep ball he's, he's got good velocity in the short and intermediate game decision making is a question making plays out of structure is a question but I think you give him the Canada offense you have Najee Harris you have Claypool you have Deontay Johnson you know if you can get another deep threat potentially besides Claypool in, in that offense I think Howell can really thrive as long as the offensive line is obviously a lot better Chargers we're going to shock you guys. I know. Jordan Davis is a perfect fit. Will they value it? I don't know. But the wide receiver room needs some more help. So let's go Garrett Wilson. Get a, get a true natural separator who can still win deep. Attacks and secures the catch point. He's slippery after the catch. He wins in all three phases of the game. Man, that'd be great for Justin Herbert opposite Keenan Allen. What else is there to say? I think there's a real good chance if they like one of the top wide receivers, if they're picking in these mid-teens area, I think they could go that direction. The Raiders are going to take Jordan Davis. It just feels like a Mayock pick that he's like, yeah, I'm going to love this guy. He's elite size, elite frame. He's a, he's a great run defender. And he's going to be able to eat double teams. So Crosby and uh, Ngakwe, if your turns, if let those two guys eat, pin their ears back, get after the quarterback, and you have Davis to plug the run and help the linebackers out to free them up at the second level to make plays downhill. I think I think it makes sense for the Raiders. I could see them, you know, potentially going after Jamison Williams if they're if they're high enough in the order. You know, corners an option, but I think Jordan Davis just just feels like a Raiders pick to me. Baltimore Ravens, they get great value all the time. They're gonna get DeMarvin Leal here. Move them all over the front, aka Calais Campbell, maybe a little bit to him. Great run defender, great athlete, gonna take advantage of being put on the interior. He's lined up at nose, one tech, three tech, five tech. Move them all over, let him get pressure. That just feels like a Ravens pick. Great value. Philadelphia Eagles. 
Let's go Ahmad Gardner with their first of three selections here. Gardner, I mean, played a good game. Didn't really have many true matchups, per se, against Jamison Williams. But again, I think he's good technique. He grabs a little bit. He's a little stiff for my liking. But long, physical, comes down and hits in the run game. I think there's enough there to work with where you kind of work with him on the transitions. You work with him on how to plant and turn and really sink his hips. I think he can get better. Got to work on being a little bit less grabby. But again, Gardner has the makings of a shutdown corner. Don't see why the Eagles wouldn't pounce. So second of two picks for the Eagles, we're going to go Nicobe Dean. Linebacker position needs to be addressed. It just does in Philly. Like, it just has to be. And Dean's football intelligence, his ability to blitz, his ability to cover, the range he has. He's not a Roquan Smith necessarily in terms of that high-level talent, that elite talent. But he's very, very, very good. And you've seen the awareness and coverage. He can make plays. You know, he has a pick six on the resume this year. I think this is a great start for building a strong second level in Philly. Miami, you know what we're doing. O-line, not so fast. Okay. We're going to go with Drake London. And, again, I, I get the offensive line. I know Kenyon Green's here. Got to be loving that if you're Miami. But I, I do think, you know, Devontae Parker... Uh, Mike Gesicki could be gone. You get your guy here in a Drake London. He could put in a slot as a power slot type player. He could be out there at X. He's improved as a route runner. He's fluid in his movement. Dominates the catch point and dominates after the catch. Sounds like a great pair of London and Waddle. Uh, New England. I am going to love, I think, this selection. Just because, again, oh, just think about this. Again, J.C. Jackson leaves in free agency. And you get a player like Andrew Booth who can be a lockdown corner. I think he's got great eyes, great ball skills, great tackling. He's going to do his job just like Belichick wants. If they don't bring Jackson back, this makes all the sense in the world. Andrew Booth there for the Patriots. Eagles back up again here. This is where I think they go edge. You just know they're going to do it. I'm going Drake Jackson uh, for the Eagles there. And just, again, another strong athlete on the edge who could get after the quarterback. I think you, you, you feel good about Josh Sweat. But other than that, I think there are some questions across the board. The interior is good. You get a fluid athlete who could get after the quarterback like Jackson can. And I, I think the defense looks very good now with those three picks for the Eagles. Cardinals. Uh, this is an easy one, I think. I If you really want Murphy to be in the slot a lot... And, and, you know, Marco Wilson, you're hoping he comes along. I still think you go Kyer Elam here. Great size, great transitions, great ball skills. I mean, that's a great combination. He's going to, I think, step in and be their cornerback one from day one. That defense still needs help, I think. Buffalo Bills, I, I like Chris Olave here. I do. I, I like this pick because, again, I think Dotson more resembles Sanders and what that Sanders role represents, but Olave's a natural separator. He's got enough 4-4 speed. That's sufficient to challenge down the field, which is kind of what a Sanders Dotson would also do for you. Again, I think Gabriel Davis is a good player on a linear, you know, plane, vertical plane. And you have, obviously, Diggs, who's one of the best in the league. But Olave gives you another separator in this offense where the Bills are just going to be able to throw, throw, throw all game long. I, I like the pick for Olave there. The Cincinnati Bengals are up. I, I like Kenyon Green. I, I think it makes a ton of sense. The interior is not good still for this offensive line. I, I like the defensive front. I, I think the linebacking crew is young and they'll get better. Corner could be an option here, but again, you got to protect Joe Burrow. You let him cook like they have done a couple times this season, especially in that Ravens game. When you have three weapons like that, just make sure the interior is good and he, he can step up. He can buy a little time either way. I, it's Kenyon Green, right guard, left guard. Maybe even tackle if he needs to come in there in relief. He can do it all, and I think do it all at a high level. Again, I don't know if the NFL is going to value him too much because they probably will see him as a guard, so seeing him drop this far isn't crazy, in my opinion. But you get a guy like Kenyon Green for the Bengals. Excellent pick there. Tampa Bay Bucks. This just feels like a Roger McCurry selection. Just been great in the SEC and just kind of flows under the radar. He's a great guy in man coverage with the size, with the speed. 
Carlton Davis could be exiting in free agency. I don't think Richard Sherman's staying a lot around for a while. You got Bunting, but I think McCurry and Bunting, great opposite each other. The secondary's been a problem this year. Yes, it's injury related, but again, I, I think it's it's still partially the talent back there. So get a guy like McCurry. Feel pretty good about that. This is a fun one. Detroit, what are they gonna do at 28? You know, you have your guy in Hutchinson. Willis Strong Ritter. Who do you like? I'm going to go strong here because I think he resembles a little bit more from Goff and what you want. He's a, he's a strong, accurate passer. I think he maneuvers the pocket well. I know there are knee concerns, and he needs to get that checked out for sure. But I think he's poised. He understands where to go with the ball pre-snap. He's, he sees the blitz coming. He knows where to go. Great decision maker. Strong arm to challenge deep, challenge outside the numbers. And again, I know the mobility is a problem. But again, you've built the trenches. You've built this offensive line to be very, very good. Let them continue that that trend, and you have a guy who doesn't really need to buy time outside the pocket to make plays because Decker, Sewell, you know Jackson, Ragnall, all these guys are there to keep that pocket clean for you. Strong, developing behind Goff. Maybe you give Goff another year. It's, it's really up to them. I think the rebuild is in place, and I think they have something good going for them. The Titans have really tried to throw stuff at the offensive line, and I know we're going to do it again here, and I, they're probably sick of it, fans. I get it. But like Trevor Penning, I, I think he's going to go in the first. I don't know where. It could be Miami. It could be Cincinnati. But I think it makes sense here. Again, I, I think Dylan Radens just looks like a guard. And obviously Isaiah Wilson didn't work out. Let Penning try to be that tackle for you. On the right side, I, I think he's physical. I think he's a he's a really, really solid player on there who who can, I think, improve with the footwork a little bit, but I think his hands are good, and I think he's powerful enough to handle this. And again, you're going to get a heavy run dose. He, he's good as a run blocker as well. Dallas Cowboys, let's shock the world here. Well, they just took Micah Parsons. Yeah, they move him everywhere, and he's freaking amazing at everywhere he plays. Yeah, he can play off the ball linebacker. He can play on the edge. I think you can get a true linebacker because I don't know if Leighton Vander Esch is the answer anymore. Obviously, Jalen Smith is gone. Why not get a guy in Devin Lloyd? Devin Lloyd can also do similar things to Parsons, which makes your defense even scarier because he can rush the passer down. He can drop down and do that. But again, he's very good in space. He gets in the backfield quick, has the range, has the instincts, gets his hands in throwing lanes. What else is there to say? I think Lloyd would make their defense very, very good, very scary heading into 2022. Chiefs, we're going to go Trayvon Walker. Don't know if you saw him really launch himself at a pulling guard last night in the playoff game, but, man, this dude's twitched up. He's powerful. He's long. Oh, man, would he be fun uh, on the edge there. Again, when you have Chris Jones, Frank Clark's been kind of eh. You need to find another edge rusher for this defense. Spagnuolo likes to blitz, but, again, it's nice to sometimes get home with four or even five, you know, depending. But, like, Walker is this guy who I think is just a great ball of clay and plays so hard, that and the traits are there, and I think he could grow into something really special uh, in the NFL. Finishing up the first round here for you guys, Green Bay Packers are going to go Jermaine Johnson, guy who transferred from Georgia, funny enough, and had a great season, 12 sacks, and was really dominant. A dominant run defender who I think can unlock more as a pass rusher, Green Bay could lose both Smith brothers. I think it's a great selection. All righty, so we're going to start off the second round here. Start with the Jags, of course. And we have a very good pick for them. Again, this is all about offense and making sure Trevor Lawrence has a great situation heading into next season. Whoever the head coach may be, John Dotson, if you want to go out and get Gallup, great. That sounds awesome. You should think about it. Maybe crazy enough, you bring back Allen Robinson. That could be an option. John Dotson, what he's going to do is be an excellent Z, great speed, improved heavily as a route runner, great release package, and plays big at the catch point. Just an all-around playmaker who's going to be really helpful for this offense and for Trevor Lawrence. They need separators. Dotson is one of them. So Detroit also needs receiver help. They have gone Hutchinson and Strong. Get Strong or Goff, whoever starts in 2022, a good receiver, David Bell, who kind of just checks all the boxes, maybe a little bit limited athletically. I think there's some, you know, the double moves are fine, but I think he could be a little bit more salesman 
oriented. I think there's just he's lacking some burst and, and to accelerate after you know putting his plant foot in the ground at times. I think his speed is solid to threaten deep. But again, he's winning with great ball skills, body control down the field. And I think he's just a reliable playmaker for an offense. And that's kind of what Detroit needs. I think Bell and Amon Ra are a good start. And you may be fine again. Like we talk about Gallup could be one of those guys. Godwin, something like that. I don't think he fits as well as an X like like Gallup would. But they, they got to do something a receiver. And I think Bell makes a ton of sense there. The Jets are up again. They have had two picks. They've gone Cross and Stingley to this point. We're going to go Daxton Hill, who I think is a phenomenal player. Again, both now uh, two safeties, uh, including Marcus May, are going to set to be free agents for the Jets. Ashton Davis just hasn't been it yet. Daxon Hill can play in the slot, can play deep. You can ask a lot of things of him. He's been much better at the catch point in terms of ball production this, this time around. Great tackler, great athlete. Man, just let the man make plays wherever you want to line him up. I think he can succeed anywhere. Help your defense out. Once again, Sala getting great talent for the secondary. Giants, let's just go all in. Trey McBride, why not? I mean, listen, Evan Ingram, free agent. Get a dude who blocks his tail off and wins with a ton of size. Great at the catch point. Good hands, and he's tough after the catch. Uber productive this past season at Colorado State. Had a phenomenal year. Why not bring this guy in and, and really... Take advantage of the blocking and receiving floor you're going to get out of him in year one. Which again, why not? When Daniel Jones is probably in his last year, see what you have. Throw everything at the offense. Defense is good enough. Texans. Just keep snagging value. Kayvon Thibodeau at, at three and then Trent McDuffie here. Just, just take best players available, Houston. You don't have to really overthink anything right now. This is a big time rebuild that you're in. Trent McDuffie, great tackler, great man in zone coverage. Washington continues to be a DBU of sorts. McDuffie, the latest. I got to love where the Texans are going if you get these two uh, to start off uh, your rebuild through the draft. Jets up again. You have McGovern for another year at center. Let's just fill out the O-line. Becton, Vera Tucker, McGovern, Zion Johnson, and Cross. Or Cross and Becton flipped. Whatever you want to do. Zion Johnson is a fabulous guard, fantastic player, gets the second level. He, he anchors so well in, in pass protection. He's got great grip strength, huge hands too. Again, a guy who's just never going to give up ground in pass protection and is just a guy who's going to just be rock solid for a decade at guard. Bears, you need a receiver. If George Pickens declares, got to be the guy. Again, he, he's a long wide catch radius type of player who's also very dynamic off the line of scrimmage, can win deep. This is your X receiver for Justin Fields, George Pickens. And you have Mooney on the other side as a Z, and you get that thing started now with the passing game. Hopefully they bring in Dable or somebody who really helps Fields in their offense, and you can just go cook with Justin Fields because it's going to happen eventually. Seattle. Oh, man. Russell Wilson could be gone. They could have a lot. They could have a couple picks before this. You never know. But man, they they just really need to get better somewhere. I think edge or tackle, either one of those makes sense here. I'm gonna go Darian Kennard. I think you whether you play McGuard or tackle, he's going to be, again, a strong player with great size. Either you're gonna have him be a good pass protector on the interior for whoever is under center next year, or you're gonna get him out to tackle where you can you know you think you can he can handle these speedier rushers better athletes outside and you feel confident in him in the run game down blocking which you should so either way i think you're going to get a successful player so again you got to build around something offensive line's a good place to start Dwayne brown could be gone as well yeah washington it's about time huh quarterback yeah uh let's go desmond ritter who again i think the game against Alabama is a tough one to evaluate because, again, that level of competition just is not the same. I think he's just a guy who needs to settle in. He needs to settle in. He misses throws high early. Accuracy is a problem, even short, intermediate, wherever, early. Just needs to settle down. He's poised. He's a good athlete on the move. Just, I think there's just refinement that needs to happen for him, for sure. And 
you know, a, a Washington team who, who you feel like the offensive line's better. You have a guy in Gibson who you can check the ball down to. McLaurin's a great, reliable receiver. You just got to, again, hone Ritter in. Accuracy-wise, hone him in. You know, make him feel more composed. Just just coach this guy up because, again, the, the tools are there. And speaking of tools, the Broncos, yes, after taking Ojabo, they're going to go Malik Willis here. Another guy with a ton of tools who I think just needs – he Willis is just more speed up the process type of thing. You, you saw it against Ole Miss where, again, he was outmanned as well. But when he's trying to throw an opposite hash hole shot, he just needs to be quicker with it. Again, phenomenal athlete, strong arm. I think he did a lot better in the pocket in 2021. However, there are just things that need to be cleaned up, sped up for him in terms of his process uh, when he drops back. And I think you go to Denver and you feel like the weapons around him are good. And the offensive line, which we might address with their third pick in this, is going to be better. And again, you just bring him along. Good investment here in the second round. Minnesota. That was a good time for Eds, right? Majai Sanders, long, loose, flexible, a good athlete, off the edge. Saw him really wreak havoc on the right side of the offensive line, Bama, in, in the semifinal. Guy who's maybe not the best run defender. You're going to have to really rely on other guys. But a, a rotational guy, you're one who's... Again, explosive and can get after the quarterback, something that Minnesota needs to do. New Orleans, like we said, it's very possible that Teron Armstead's not there. Let's go Bernard Raymond, another guy who's just strong, physical at the point of attack, has a finishing mindset, going to be down at the Senior Bowl. He's going to be fun to watch in the one-on-ones. You know, maybe the Saints fall in love with him down there and they make him their left tackle of the future right here uh, for whoever's playing quarterback. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Cleveland Browns, and I'm looking at my phone here if you guys can't tell, because again, it's hard to remember 64 picks, but the Cleveland Browns love this for them. Cameron Thomas, who I think is going to go a lot higher than people realize, phenomenal player for San Diego State, double-digit sacks, just, just a beast. Again, strong edge setter as well, but again, flexible enough to threaten around the arc, work back inside. He's got an array of moves. And again, a guy who's maybe big enough to where, you know, if you get a little get a little fun, uh, you can throw him in on the interior and beat up on some guards as well. This is a guy who's going to be a big riser throughout the process. Testing comes around, he'll kill that. And, and I think Cleveland Brown's got to be happy with what they've got. Burks and Thomas, two positions of need, two very, very good players. Atlanta Falcons, we're going to go safety here. I know they just took... Richie Grant, and you hope that he can play slot, play deep. Let's get a guy who's a little bit better in the box. And Jaquan Brisker, again, build this defense back up to where it needs to be. Brisker's a good player. He's an opportunistic player with the ball in the air, but he's also very physical in a short area of the field. He can be a great robber. He can work, again, blitzing downhill. Great tackler. Does a lot of the little things right, and I think he'd be a guy who you can become a leader on this defense. Pittsburgh. Back up on the clock. They took Sam Howell again. Offensive line right now, when you look at this draft, it doesn't look good. NPF, Ryan Kirkland, all these guys kind of have had struggles down the stretch. In the interior, lost some juice when guys like Ricky Stromberg decided to return to school. John Michael Schmitz, who I think was really gaining steam. So I think we're going to hold off, and we're going to go corner. Darian Kendrick, converted wide receiver, played a while at Clemson, off-field issues, Goes to Georgia, has a great season. He's a guy who I think, you know, you can press bail, work that side saddle where he's kind of got his hips facing up and he's got his body turned towards the middle of the field. He's very good in that area. I think he's still good when he can press. He's physical and, again, great tracker of the football and can make plays at the catch point. As a converted receiver, you expect good route recognition and you expect good ball skills. He has those. Pittsburgh needs somebody like Kendrick on their defense. Raiders. This might not even be a reach by draft day, but the Raiders just feel like a team who reaches. But again, Kobe Bryant is a Thorpe Award winner. So he's no slouch opposite of my Gardner. Like Kobe Bryant's another long, physical, athletic corner who, again, is a guy who's opportunistic, very good at the catch point, strong hands. He's almost a 50-50 ball winner as, as a corner, really. And I think he's he's a very, very good player. The Thorpe Award should have brought more people to his um, to his tape and to how he plays because he's very very good and the Raiders obviously Arnett 
didn't really work out. Trayvon Mullen's not working out. They got to figure out the corner position. Why not Kobe Bryant? The Ravens, I think, should take a chance at this point as Sean Ryan, who I think is a, a he's a good knee bender at tackle. I think he's strong enough. I think he's good enough working side to side, reactionary quickness, good footwork. Sometimes let's defensive lineman into his chest a little bit too much, but I think something there where you either, you know, I, I think there's enough. I, I do. And it's just a gut feeling. I think there's enough to work with as a tackle. Definitely uh, in the second round here for the Ravens, who Alejandro Villanueva is just not cutting it. They need to keep Lamar Jackson upright. They got to make sure he can stand in the pocket just a little bit longer before he has to scramble. Sean Ryan liked the pick there. Okay, so obviously the Chargers didn't take Jordan Davis. And that's and D-line is the direction we're going. Because again, in this Brandon Staley defense, you have to be able to defend the run with some space eater up front who can free up the alley guys like the safeties and the linebackers to make plays. They're not doing that. I don't think Devontae White or Perion Winfrey, even Mathis, really, these are your guys who are more penetration, pass rushing types at the three tech. So we're going to go a little bit lower here. Don't freak out. I think Travis Jones is a very, very good player. And I think as the UConn tape flows in, people are going to understand that this dude's wicked quick off the ball. He plays a lot of one tech, but he can get after the quarterback, can also eat up plenty of space, hold his ground against double teams, plays with good leverage, good pad level. I like Travis Jones quite a bit, and I think the Chargers would love to have him on that defensive line. Eagles, I think you go safety. I do. I think you get Jordan Battle, who I think's been a lot better on the back end. I think he's good at reading the quarterback. Flies to the football. Still could come down and play some box for you. He can move all over. And I think that's something they need on that back end. Anthony Harris on a one-year deal. Kayvon Wallace, eh, not much at the moment. So I like Jordan Battle in this instance. Just, just write it down. This is easy. San Francisco needs corner so bad. Kyler Gordon. Another great Washington defensive back who I think can slide and be a starter right away. Maybe every bit as good as McDuffie, and a lot of people believe that. And I think the Niners be very, very pleased to have a player like that at 52 for them. Miami Dolphins back up. Oh, man. I, I think if I were to pick one, I'd pick Thayer Munford, but not in this mock draft, unfortunately. They're going to go Kenneth Walker the third, who I think is a great feel um, as a running back in the backfield, I think his vision, his processing speed is quick and he's quick to plant that foot in the ground, stay efficient and explode up the field. Has had a lot of big runs for Michigan state. One of the more impressive transfer stories of the year, obviously Jamison Williams, the other, but man Walker over from wake forest has done a phenomenal job. Great running behind the pads, but again, has that burst and explosion to, you know, break off some big, huge runs. Gaskin really isn't a bell cow back. You know, they, they brought in Lindsay. I don't think that's going to be a long-term thing. Let's go Kenneth Walker and get uh, Tua Tagovailoa, a, a true running back to lean on, and the offense really to lean on. Indianapolis Colts. I don't know if he's going to declare, but Wondell Robinson, great game today in the Citrus Bowl. 10 for 170. Again, probably a Z slot type of guy. He, he could be labeled as a gadget, but the dude is just... Again, great body control. He secures the ball in the air. He can go leap up and make plays. He's explosive. He's fast. He can be a deep threat in this in this offense for Indianapolis. I, I wouldn't rule it out. Again, obviously, size concern. But, man, for Indy, this guy and Naheem Hines in the same offense is a, is a scary thought, especially with Pittman really growing and you have Jonathan Taylor. So, Wondell Robinson would be really fun uh, for this offense. Patriots, we're going to go John Mechie. I know that, that the ACL tear is a bit concerning. I still think he, he's a really strong separator. I think he's got a great idea of the plan, understanding leverage, where how he attacks, using his head and shoulders as, as really a mechanism to deceive corners. And I think he's, you know, I think he's gotten better at the catch point. He, he had an issue with attacking and securing the football last season. I think he's gotten better there, and I think he's done enough to prove that he can be a number two in this offense and a strong one at that. Again, I know it's a little late to be expecting the Patriots to grab one of these elite guys. Maybe they do in the first round, but I think Mets would be very good in this offense. It's about time uh, Bill Belichick and Nick Saban said, yeah, let's, let's agree on a guy and let's get him to New England. I think this is great value. 
some are lower on Kingsley and Aguirre just because athletically I think there are limitations for him. However, I think he is a very strong rusher, powerful player who, again, is probably not the double-digit guy you're going to ask for in his rookie season, but again, is going to do enough for you in terms of defending the run and kind of pushing the pocket a little bit to freak quarterbacks out. And again, I think you need him on this defense. The front needs to be better, especially if Chandler Jones does not return. So I like the value there for Arizona. Cincinnati Bengals. Let's get, in, let's get an attacking defensive tackle uh, in Devontae Wyatt. Really like this just because, again, th- this defense is very good when you have a guy like Trey Hendrickson for you. And he's done a phenomenal job this year. I think, like we talked about, the linebackers are good. They could go corner here. I don't love what's there. Devontae Wyatt's a guy who can attack gaps. Good arm over move, swim move, active hands, powerful hands. He can get after the quarterback. Exactly what the Bengals need from the interior. Buffalo Bills, I think they're going to go running back here too. I think Thayer Munford would also be on the table, but we're going to go Zach Charbonnet. Maybe a little shocking over Hall and Spiller. But again, a guy who's got phenomenal bursts, and I think he's shown he showed something at UCLA this season that maybe wasn't there at Michigan. I think he's unlocked a new gear for himself in terms of the, the breakaway speed. But again, he's strong vision, good contact balance. I think he finally gives the Bills something to lean on in the run game than just Josh Allen QB runs uh, late in games. This is where it's going to be interesting because you could go MPF, Kirkland. You know, all these guys who play, Lucas has played on the right side a ton. Daniel Fa'alale has as well for Minnesota. I just would be feel so much better about saying, hey, Thayer Munford, who's played left guard, left tackle. Let's see how you do on the right side for us. Just because I think he's a better offensive lineman, who I think good reach blocker, strong player at the point of attack. I, I think this is the right idea for Denver here. And I know it's asking him to do a lot to transition. I just think he's a good lineman who can make it happen because I, again, m- moved into left guard this season, looked very, very good. He's He was serviceable at left tackle. Let's try him at right tackle. And I think he's worth a gamble here late in the second round. You know they're going to do it to you. Isaiah Spiller, Tampa Bay Bucks, Probably should go running back. Um, I, I know Fournette's been very good as a pass catcher. I don't see Gio Bernard returning. Yeah, I, I think Vaughn's done okay, and, and Jones has done okay. As a real like strong bell cow runner, I think Spiller's a better athlete, great contact balance, and has offered something in the passing game as well this season that, that should have boosted his stock. I just don't know when the first running back's going to come off the board. That's the that's the real struggle, is to find that. But I think Spiller provides a lot for, for Tampa Bay in both phases of the game. Atlanta Falcons are going Brees Hall here. The running back run continues. Brees Hall, good vision, breaks off the big runs. You kind of take the good with the bad because he's a little overly patient at times and he won't hit the hole sometimes when he hopes there's something else coming his way. And you see those zero one-yard runs a lot, but he also has a lot of 40 and 50-yard runs. I think this is a guy you can lean on if Matt Ryan's there or not there. Maybe they move on, get somebody else, Cousins, Jimmy G, who knows? Who knows how the carousel is going to unfold? I think Brees Hall is a good guy. Great guy to pair with a guy like Cordero Patterson. Dallas Cowboys, safety. Lewis Seen just does everything well. Like, he's not this uber athlete who's just all over the field making plays with just ridiculous range, and he's got the ridiculous wide catch radius to disrupt lanes. No, he just does his dang job, whether it be a free safety, whether it be lurking underneath, over the middle. Like, this is just a guy who's, again, a strong hitter, strong tackler, who I think just student of the game, great football IQ, great recognition skills. So I think wherever you play him, you're going to get a good player out of this in your secondary that kind of needs help on the back end. Chiefs, what are we going to do? We are going to take Romeo Dupes. Uh, another guy who's, again, I think dynamic off the line of scrimmage, deep threat, but also is a bigger target to throw to for Mahomes rather than these guys who are 5'9", 180. Like a, you know, like Hardman and Hill. Get a bigger guy like Dubes who can, you know, challenge the catch point, be a red zone threat other than Kelsey, and, you know, give something more to this offense. I think they need another separator, and I think Dubes does a great job, I think, initially, you know, as a separator. Work that release package into his stem, but I think he's a good separator on the slant route, and he's good deep. Maybe needs some work in terms of 
footwork efficiency for intermediate routes. But I think, again, he's going to give you stuff short and he's going to give you stuff deep. That's where the Chiefs like to attack. Packers are going to finish up here. We're going to go Alec Pierce from Cincinnati, the wide receiver. Big bodied target. A lot of the receiver room is going to be likely moving on. This guy's a great blocker, which they love in Green Bay. Good size, which they also love in Green Bay. Improved as a route runner, but also a good deep threat, good red zone threat. I think he does a lot of good things well for the Packers, and that's why he's going to be the pick there, I think, if he's available. I think there's a chance he rises. But there you go, 64 picks for you guys uh, for this mock draft. Hope you enjoyed the two rounds. Maybe we'll go three at some point on the channel if you guys are interested in that. But hope you enjoyed Maybe like and subscribe if you're new. More draft content, NFL film content, all that stuff coming soon, and a live show. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Farewell.